this vlog, I am playing Flight 1B of the $600 buying 500k guaranteed event at the win. In this hand, um, I am fairly new to this table. It is big blind 600. I have a 25k starting stack. I am sitting in the cutoff and get dealt the king queen of clubs. And in this situation, having about 40 big blinds, um, I get to raise about 38% of hands from a theory perspective. However, since all three opponents behind me are unknown players and they seem to all be recreational to me, it means I'm going to be opening a little bit wider than this theory 38% of hands. Um, so I'm probably going to include hands here, like the ace deuce through ace four offsuit, uh, fully opening king eight off. I'm probably going to, you know, throw in this nine eight off. I might throw in seven eight off if I'm feeling really frisky. I'm also going to include queen deuce, queen three suited, uh, jack five suited, uh, this really nice nine six suited, um, seven five suited, six four suited. Going to fully open this. Um, probably 5-3 and 4-3 suited as well. So instead of opening 38%, I'm going to be a little bit closer to more like 50%. So I'm almost trading this like I'm, I'm opening the button. Also, since I have weaker opponents behind, I only min open to 1,200. And the reason why I'm opening to 1,200 here with recreational players behind is because I want to keep the stack to pot ratio as deep as possible. I want to give myself the opportunity to open as many hands as I can, and by risking less chips, I give myself a better odds to steal the blinds. And then on top of all that, if I generally expect my opponents to three bet me too small and to base it purely off of my opening size, then I want to open smaller so when they do three bet me, I get to call a much looser range due to having better direct odds as well as better implied odds. The small blind calls off of a 40k stack and the big blind defends from a 70k stack. So pot size is 4,500. <laughs> and the flop is the king of diamonds, the six of clubs, and the three of hearts. And they both check to me. So when I saw them look at their cards pre-flop, as well as I saw them act post-flop, there weren't any alarm bells that went off. Like, neither seemed like... They were going to three bet me pre-flop. Neither seemed like they completely destroyed the flop. Um, I wouldn't say I had a strong read going the opposite way, but I definitely did not pick up on any reads. And the reason why I'm mentioning that is because playing poker in, in general, but especially playing live poker, is all about the information that you have available. And I'm always going to try to do my best to make sure that you have the exact same type of information that I have that way when i'm explaining my thought process and to why i made certain decisions then you can follow along pretty easily and then if say i happen to be wrong about something you can point it out to me or if you think that say maybe you really appreciate the read and anyways so the flop is king of diamonds six of clubs three of hearts and they both check to me uh, so flopping this very strong top pair here, I have a very, very easy decision to bet my hand for value. So when I'm playing against recreational players, I'm largely thinking from a perspective of what does my hand want to accomplish versus their ranges. So if, say, I have a strong value hand like I do here, I'm generally going to be trying to do my best to pick a larger bet size. Even if theory doesn't necessarily go large with my exact hand, I'm generally going to try to do my best to build large pots with good hands. Okay, so we're going to pull this up in uh, Range Runner Post Flop. And we can look at this spot from uh, as though it was just the big blind caller and use that as a means to try to figure out how we might want to approach a three-way decision here. Before I get to where my decision point is that I want to learn about, um, I first try to guess what I think theory is going to do in general here. Not just with my exact hand, but actually with my entire range. Um, the main reason that I try, uh, the main way that I try to approach it is, I'll just give you an example for this exact hand. So this is my first time looking at this. I have no idea going into this. So king six three 
Um, it kind of hits the big blinds defense range in a lot of different ways. They can have 3x, they can have 6x, they, they have lots of king x defends, every king x suited, um, a ton of king x offsuit, especially against late position. Um, so because their range interacts pretty well with this texture, um, I think we get to upsize a little bit, but my guess is we're largely going a quarter pot. We're checking back a probably a fairly small percentage of the time. Um, and maybe if we do go two thirds pot, um, it's probably not super often. So this is me guessing as to what we're supposed to be doing here. And now we're going to look at it, see how close I got. So got 16% check back, got pretty close to that. It's correct about largely going 25% pot. Um, I thought we'd be able to go two thirds, but it looks like uh, I was off. But I didn't think we'd go two thirds very often. Now, what this does is since I'm actively thinking about what I should probably be doing going into this, then I am honestly checking myself to see how well I actually understand this spot in a global sense. From there, I can then have a better idea as to how different parts of my range should play. And that just makes it much easier for me to build an overall approach and strategy for this type of situation. Now, actually looking at this bot, as you can see here, theory just goes a quarter pot, which isn't surprising to me at all. That being said, I decided to bet just over two thirds pot, betting 3000 into a pot size of 4,200 the small blind folds, and the big blind calls. Now, the main reason why I'm choosing to go larger here is simply because I'm pretty confident that when I bet large here, my opponent isn't going to be aware of the fact that when I bet large here versus them in this exact situation, that I only have good value hands. When the big blind calls, he called fairly quickly. Like, I bet fairly quickly, and then he called very quickly fairly quickly. The small blind like snap folded. So I don't think it's very likely that he has a hand that he was considering check raising. Uh, so that probably removes his sets, uh, his king three suited, his king six offsuit. Um, he also probably isn't super likely to have some draws. Um, but that being said, being a more recreational player, you know, if he still has a lot of different straight draws or hands that do make really good check raises, it wouldn't surprise me in the least. And actually, we're going to look at this bot really quick um, in post uh, in theory here. Um, so we're gonna say that I bet small. We're gonna look at the types of hands that they are supposed to check raise. Um, looks like they do actually have some king three off defense here, decent number. They're supposed to check raise those. Um, we're, we're just going to look at the types of hands that they're going to check raise. Um, looks like that those 5-4 combos, they're supposed to essentially peer check raise. 7-5 uh, is supposed to check raise fairly often. Even hands like these backdoor straight and flush draws are all supposed to check raise. I mean, 7-8 suited, 9-8 eight, eight suited, 9-7 suited, 10-8 suited, 10-7 suited. Each one of these with the backdoor straight, uh, or sorry, backdoor flush draw are all pretty great check raises. Um, they are supposed to check raise as weak as even king four off here for value, uh, not super often, but they do get to check raise pretty weak king x's. Um, they also are using these ace x as check raises, which I guess isn't too surprising. Block some of my really strong hands, they can turn equity. I guess the one that's a little surprising is this ace six, as it's kind of mergy. Um, it's not really a bluff, it's not really a value raise either. It's like a bit of an equity denial. Uh, when they call the pot size going into the turn is 10,200. So the turn is a six, bringing a backdoor flush draw to go with the three. Um, in real world, it was the six of hearts. So turn is the six of hearts. And my opponent checked to me fairly quickly. Um, didn't look like they were interested in leading at all um, or didn't even consider it even a tiny bit. Um, this is a really, really, really good lead card for them. It's the best lead card in the deck, I'm pretty sure. And since they didn't lead, it makes it pretty confident that my king is the best hand. It also makes it a little bit harder for them to have many calls. 
So because of that, I think it's pretty important that I'm not too greedy here and that I go with the smaller size. Now, theoretically speaking, I assume that my king and queen should probably go two thirds pot um, and probably close to always. But um, I thought in game that downsizing a little bit that I'm going to get pretty much an entire range to call. So I think I am going to generate a little bit more positive equity. So because of that in game, I decided to go uh, 4K, which I think is fine. Um, I think if I went two thirds though, that I'd be completely and totally okay with that too though. So they check to me. Solver world looks like I am going quarter pots occasionally, two thirds pot occasionally, pot occasionally, kind, kind of does a little bit of everything. So he calls, the pot size is now 18,200, and the river is an offsuit 10. And then he checks pretty quickly again, not seeming to be too interested in this hand. So I decide to bet 7,000 into a pot size of 18,000, and unfortunately he folds very quickly and shows the four five of hearts for a flop straight draw that turned a straight flush draw and now just check folds the river. Let me know what you think about each of the decisions I made in this hand and if you would do anything differently. Thank you for watching and best of luck at the tables. Uh, we might not necessarily end with thank you for watching best of luck at the tables, but we'll at least end with um, some version of, hey, you know, let me know what you thought whatever um and either i can do it with like that or you can just you know insert yourself in some capacity uh yep